I first learned about the Gale Force Twins from Dennis Friel, a marine artist down here in Pompano who I filmed with last season. He had been working closely with the girls and, you know, kind of told me about their story and how genuine they were and kind of sparked my interest. I started following them on social media and, you know, really liked what I saw and reached out to them. I first met Amanda and Emily in the Bahamas. Uh, we were both there for the custom shootout in Marsh Harbor. And immediately we met and became friends and I saw the two of them and I was completely inspired by them. Two captains that are 24 years old, identical twins, basically said, we just want to fish for the rest of our lives. How long have you been guiding for? We started working on our own in January, so a year. So pretty, pretty but, new, pretty yeah. fresh. And hearing this story from Dennis, I realized that these girls are you know, they're just eating up with fishing. You know, they're in it because they love it and they have a passion for it and they're trying to make a, a living at it and a go at it and I admire that. But also when we have kids, we bring um, snackle boxes. We call them like, it's like a tackle box, but you fill it with like gummy worms and like candy and like goldfish and that keeps them entertained. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. That was gonna be my biggest challenge of the day to remember who was who. And they got on the boat, they introduced themselves, and immediately I forgot. I was like, oh God, I'm gonna have to ask this again. Okay, who is who? I had talked to Emily and Amanda leading up to the trip, and they had a plan on what we were gonna do for the day. I really didn't want to have any influence on what that plan was, and I just wanted them to do what they normally do. And I was excited to get out of the inlet and, and see what the area and what they had to offer. You should have brought name tags. You should have the names on the back of your shirts for your clients. You know, I've spent time with a lot of people trying to get into the industry, and sometimes people can be a little naive to what they have ahead of them, and the girls don't seem that way. You know, they've already spent time, you know, mating on other boats over the summer during their school years, and they understand that this is a process. You don't gain that popularity and that kind of business overnight and it's a marathon it's not a sprint and it seems like they're in it for the long haul and they're in it for like I said they're in it for the right reasons they love fishing they love teaching they love being out on the water and, and good things are gonna happen yes. does that have wire on it please no. <laughs> please don't bite us off <laughs> well take your time with him it's a, a it's a circle hook, so. Yeah, we want to catch it. Like, that's the goal. <laughs> could be a, yeah, it could be a black pin. It's so easy. Oh, it was? That was on the bottom? Yeah. All the way on the bottom? Yeah. Just keep fighting it. Not a shark. Yeah. Might be a. I'm Maybe it's a you. king. No, it's not. It almost looks like a. I don't know. It ran like really fast. Oh. AJ. Oh. AJ. Oh. Nice AJ. <laughs> a good fish. <laughs> That's a good nice good fight right there on job. a spinning rod. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it was down 230 Two. feet of water. On the bottom. Ooh. So when we were turning 13, we asked 
our parents for a fishing charter for our birthday present and I told my mom it had to be a charter that the captain was going to teach us because we really wanted to learn and get better. And my mom emailed a bunch of the captains and only one captain like specifically said, tell your girls I said happy birthday. So she was like, okay, that's the guy that I want to go with. And like we still talk to him today. His name's Captain Robert. He's a really great captain. He's a really nice guy. He's very friendly. And that I feel like I have found is not super common amongst some charter captains. So that's really important for my sister and I to just be always friendly with our charter clients and always make sure that they're having a good time. What do you think? A little smaller boat? Yeah. That's what you're quite used to, huh? It took a minute to... The hybrid, though, yeah. I mean, you're down close to the water, you're really, you're really in, you know, in touch with it, what's yeah. going on. But once you get set up, you know, that's the whole thing. Once you get out here, yeah. it's a great platform to fish off. We got the troll motor holding the nose into the That's That's offshore. my favorite part. Isn't that cool? Yeah. We got a good spread. I mean, everything looks good. Three baits on that side. I think we have three baits on this side. Yeah, we yeah. do. I receive. Good. Oh, no, it ate a squid. <laughs> <laughs> Everything eats squid. That's the great thing about it. Oh, a little, little grouper. All right. oh, red. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at how he's hooked. Is this yours? No. Mine's oh. a mono. Oh, That's wow. <laughs> oh my Man, gosh. look at that. He's got wire. Oh my God, I've seen it all now. That came out of him. If I let him go, I bet you he'll be fine. There he goes. <laughs> wow. Somebody's kingfish rig. turn the nose into the wind a little bit. Because this was a, a challenging day. We weren't gonna make it easy for the, the twins and whether it was the moon, whether it was the changing weather, the changing winds. I mean, we had rain, then we had sun, we had, they were, you know, they were presented with a bunch of different challenges and they rose to each one of them. To this day, yellowtail and yellowtailing is my favorite thing to do. And it's so fun, like pound for pound, the fish is, it gives a good fight. They they run with the bait and you know they, they take drag. So I just I I love yellowtailing. I don't know. Maybe it's probably a subconscious thing. Yeah. Yay! Squid on the bottom. We're hooked up. Oh, a little yellowtail. My I favorite. Got the weight. It's a nice yellowtail. It is. That's a cheese special right there. That thing followed you girls up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. You get quite a few of those around here on these reefs, right? Yeah. Yeah, we get them. Yeah, we get them. Yeah. Pretty fish. Great eating. Oh, yeah. So it's actually my favorite. Yeah. Okay. We're going to let him go. And live another day. There he goes. <laughs> ha! Beautiful. We decided to start chartering out of Pompano Beach because it was basically the closest fishing town to home that we had. We grew up a little bit west and we spent a lot of time out on the water growing up as kids on the beach in Pompano. And it felt like a very natural fit for us. Like when we came to Pompano initially, my sister and I loved bottom fishing and there was another charter captain in the area that he wasn't really into bottom fishing, but he had a bunch of numbers and he just like handed them over. I was like, wow, I was not expecting that. But it was just like, the people here have been really friendly to us and they really care and I feel like they want us to succeed and they're not afraid to necessarily like share the success. We don't have a single family member that fishes, even like recreationally. Like we were the two to start and I, of course when we were kids our dad was out there with us tying whatever knots he could to help us. So we were like the first 
kids of our, both our parents' sides that really grew up on the water. So you guys went to graduate UM, right? Yeah. Biology degrees? Um, no, microbiology. My, oh, microbiology. And immunology. Immunology. Yes. That's like pre-med stuff. Yeah, that's cute. All right. But you elected not to do any of that and pursue a career in fishing. Absolutely. We were... Uh... Right. And what do your parents think? <laughs> they stoked? Yeah, actually, they... Um... I think we were just like ready for the next step, and our parents were like, "Wait, like, are you, like, are you sure?" And I was like, "I, I actually, I'm not." We're and just then go they're like, "Just go do something normal. Be a normal person." We're like, okay, let's go be normal people. I think normal would have been medical school. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I not don't know. fishing guides. <laughs> yeah. Not fishing captains. But oh, that's killer. There you go. Oh, there he is. There he oh, is. pegged it. Uh. 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 uh we're going back. That looked like a good one, too. There's a bite there. there. He got his nut. Oh! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's there. <laughs> grocery shopping. We are grocery shopping now. Kids love this. My kids love this. Just turn the dial and sit back. Yeah, and... it's like one of my favorite types of yeah. fishing. We take people out and we're like, okay, you gotta push the button. And they're like, this is my kind of fishing. It's like when I sit back, it's fun. Ooh. Get ready to start slowing it down. Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh yeah, we got a good one. Oh, that's a uh, uh, tile fish. Is it? I think. Wait, how do you engage this? <laughs> oh, I think it is. Swing it this way. Oh, it's a <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Take your time. There we go. Oh, what a pretty yes. fish. No blue line. Wow. Nice. That's great oh, eating, right? really Oh good my eating. gosh, it's so good. A lot of these yeah. deep water fish are. We're in 530 yeah. feet of water. A lot of those deep water fish compared are compared to like a lobster or like not so like much. I like I think that they taste like stone crab. Okay. I really do. Well, I'm allergic to stone crab, so I've oh. never had so. <laughs> oh. Maybe it'll be just. Uh, have you had lobster? I'm allergic are you to lobster? Shellfish. Oh. oh, well then you should try this. It'll yeah. Be yeah. Be my <laughs> closest already. thing I can get. Yeah. <laughs> so these are in season right now. Absolutely. Um, we're in state waters, so the season's open, and I believe it's a hundred pounds per, per person. person. Wow. So we can, we can catch keep a couple. Quite a few. Quite a few. All right, well, we'll keep a little something for dinner. What a great looking fish. Sweet, look at that thing. Cool. All right, we'll throw them in the box. We were out on the deep drop spot. Five minutes, we get a beautiful blue line tile fish. And I think, oh my God, you know, first drop, five minutes here, it's on. We're going to load the boat with these things. It was funny. As soon as it turns on, it shuts off again. And just another challenge for the girl. The day prior, I looked up at the sky at night and I knew that it was going to be a grind. I don't know, somehow I always do it. I end up scheduling these productions for full moons, but I landed directly on a full moon. And it is the kiss of death for fishing, in my opinion. Whether inshore or offshore, the fish tend to bite early in the morning, late in the evening, but for the most part, during the day, it can be a total grind. We're a full day into this. We're sun up to sundown now with a limited number of fish. And I tell you, it's not because the lack of trying. Just some days the fish don't bite. But the girls weren't done. And so they said to me, listen, we do nighttime snapper trips. We have a spot on the way in. Let's run into 300 feet of water. Let's drop down and, and try to catch some snapper. 
You want to fish on? Fish on! Now you only got 330 feet to crank them up. <laughs> it's worth it. Hand, be a while. I feel like I'm over here just really hoping it's something decent. I caught two. Nice. Yes. 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 Look at that. That's a long crank from the bottom. There you go. So this is a vermilion. Vermilion snapper and black fin snapper. Here's the black. Oh. And black fins have no uh, limit or any for regulation. Are they good eating? Yeah, snapper. Are we keeping these? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, black fins, they like got rid of the size limit on them because they could just die. Okay. <laughs> Once they get to the top, Fermi's up to be 12, so. No, he's 12. Oh, yeah. He is two at a time. That's how it's done. George is hooked <laughs> up. Now I gotta reel that bar. 339 feet. Doing great. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a vermi! It's a vermi! Yeah! You got your I first already got vermi. one! Huh? High fives! Vermi's for everybody. The days of success. <laughs> Ultimate. Amanda, Emily explained to me that sometimes even at this spot they're not there. So it was a gamble to go there. Um, but they're willing to take that risk. I was willing to go with them and, and, and try. And it was funny. I think they even had additional spots on the way in. This wasn't going to be the last stop if it wasn't producing. And that's what I loved about fishing with them. We've had parents tell us that we've inspired their kids to get out and fish. And that means a lot to us. And we've seen it happen too. And we just, we really, we really enjoy that and we like teaching people. I think that it's fun to teach people that have never done it before because they're so much more amazed at things than you are. And it's like, wow, I should really think this is cool, but I've done it a hundred times, you know? But it definitely makes it, puts it into perspective. At the end of the day, when the charter's over and everyone's done fishing, I think that what determines the success of the day would be the smiles. Yeah. And the kids, specifically kids, going home happy, knowing that they had like a wonderful experience. And that they want to come back. Yeah. I hope it's fine. I tell people I'm a guide, not a god. You cannot make them eat when they don't want to eat. You can put the best bait in front of them at the best time, the best water depth, and what, if they're going to eat, they're going to eat, and if they're not, so be it, you know? Just guaranteed to take you out and bring you home. Everything in between is gravy. And you have to be grateful for the gravy. I mean, that's what you have to be grateful for. You have to be grateful for going out and seeing the sunrise and seeing that sunset and that moon come up. That, those are the things that, those are the memories, not holding up a fish. I mean, yeah, I mean, we'll, you catch so many fish. It's about the experience of spending time together, you know, creating new friendships, having laughs, and just enjoying everything that Mother Nature has to offer. Twin telepathy is real. <laughs> when we were like babies, like the same tooth on the opposite side would fall out and grow in. Yeah. So the whole idea is you're looking, looking at a mirror. mirror. That's supposedly an identical twin thing. <laughs> That's a nice one too. That's huge, dude, huh? How big is that? We that thing is gigantic. Not one one. I'm right-handed. I'm left-handed. Are you talking really quiet though? Really? Did she talk quieter than I did during the? Who wins? Obviously not me. <laughs> <laughs> Unfathomed. Hey buddy, get me back in the water. <laughs> <laughs>